All right, folks, check it out. We got some more goodies. Got some fun treats. No tricks. Got got some fun trick or treats here. Come on. All right. Why is this in such the biggest bag in that bucket? I got some arms. Uh, would have been pretty cool if I pulled out the same pair. I got some separate arms that we can add to the set here. We're gonna put these arms uh, part of the set. Uh, you know what, maybe I should get out of the chair. We'll put you here, cause it'll... There we go. I don't even know if you can see them. <laughs> All right, uh, there we go. All right, um... That works. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to day 9 of 31 Wild Halloween Review Nights, and before I go into today's discussion, I should tell you about the thought that I had the other night. This series is called 31 Wild Halloween Review Nights, but I keep referring to each video as a different day. Well, it made sense to do that when I was doing the Christmas mini-series, because that was called 25 Wild Christmas Review Days. And in those videos, I would say day one, day two, you know, like I'm doing here. I'm referring to this series as nights, which means every night I'm coming to you with a different Halloween film or special. Should I be referring to these videos as nights then? Like when I open up and start these videos, should I say night nine? You know what, let's just stick with it for now and we'll see how it goes. Maybe I will stick with it, maybe I won't. Welcome to the ninth night of 31 Wild Halloween Review Nights. Uh, now this begs the question, should I go back into each video that I've exported and re-edit them so this way their beginnings say night instead of day? The answer is no. Hey, let's talk about Corpse Bride. Released in 2005, this stop-motion Tim Burton film takes us back to the 19th century in the Victorian times, where we focus on a young man named Victor, voiced by Johnny Depp. He's about to go through with an arranged marriage with a young lady named Victoria. Though after feeling the pressure and messing up the rehearsals for the wedding, he takes a walk into the woods to practice everything he's supposed to say, so it's perfect on his wedding day. When he finally gets it right, he places the ring on what seems to be a little twig, but it soon reveals to actually be the hand of a corpse bride named Emily. Now accidentally married to this corpse, Victor is whisked away into the world of the dead and is desperate to find his way back home. I've heard about this film for years, I've been aware of it, I've seen clips, I've seen photos, I've seen cosplays of this film, and I never got the chance to actually sit down and watch it. I had the chance last year, I found it on TV, but I was busy around the time that it was premiering, so I wanted to record it on my DVR, and that never happened. So I'm really glad that I finally got a chance to check it out, and I'm not gonna lie, I found enjoyment of it. I'm aware that this film is very underrated. I know some people love it. I know some people hate it. It's just one of those Tim Burton films that you look at and you're like, well, this can go one or two ways. The work I always associate Tim Burton with is Nightmare Before Christmas. I'm not sure if you can tell that I'm a Nightmare Before Christmas fan. I absolutely love that film, and you bet your bottoms that I am talking about Nightmare Before Christmas in this lineup. In regards to stop motion films, this is the only other Tim Burton stop motion film that I've seen. So would I put Corpse Bride above Nightmare Before Christmas? No, but that's just me. I, I really like Nightmare Before Christmas. But that doesn't mean that Corpse Bride isn't good. It does have its ups and it does have its downs. One of the main ups is just the look, the design, and the sound of it all. The film takes place in the 19th century in a Victorian village, and it definitely looks it. The colors are very blah and dull, and I like it. I, I like the gothic look that we have with these characters, the, the shading of 
all the shadows and how things look in this town. I mean, when we go into the underworld, it's very different. The colors are a little brighter, not fully brighter, because like, I don't want to make it sound like that it's a, a very colorful film, because that's exactly what it's not. You can definitely tell where you are in this film just by the colors alone. Like, you won't see any green in the scenes that take place in the Victorian village, but you will see a little shade of green in the underworld. You'll see a little bit of bright red, not a very bright red, but a little bright red. Just more colors in the underworld. And I think it's great. I, I think the look of how everything is, it's, it's really well put together. You can tell it's a Tim Burton film just kind of by looking at it. Uh, one of the notes that I wrote down uh, specifically during the beginning when they break into the musical number of how everything needs to go according to plan uh, regarding the wedding. Some of these characters could be monsters themselves just by the way they're designed, by the way their face is. The, I mean, Victor himself is just thin. He is like a skeleton of his own. I know this is the Tim Burton style. Every artist has their own little style. But, I mean, like, Jesus. <laughs> You got people who are tall, you got people who are chubby and small, you got... Skeletons. <laughs> I mean, the priest character, he's got the biggest hat. It's like he's wearing the hat from Fairly Odd Parents that Doug Dimidome would wear. That is, a, that is a big hat. And a big chin. He's got a big chin. I think the music was really well put together. I believe Danny Elfman was in charge of putting the music together for this film. He did the music for Nightmare as well. I just think his his way of making music and songs are just really outstanding. Uh, there are songs in this film, like I mentioned, they, they did a song about how things need to go according to plan. I actually think that's the exact title of the song. Uh, but there aren't as many songs that I... Th well, actually, I didn't even think there would be songs in this. There aren't that many songs in this film. There's about, like, four of them. So if you're not a huge musical buff like I, I'm kinda, I know in the past I said I'm not very big on musicals, that's kinda changed. I mean, if it's a catchy song, I'll enjoy it. And the songs in this film are very catchy. I specifically like the song that is sung when Victor is entered into the underworld with all the skeletons around, singing about how she's a corpse bride, Emily, and her story of what happened. Uh, the other song that was sung about actually putting together the wedding, that is also very entertaining and fun to listen to. This film did have a lot of funny bits in it as well. Um, Emily has a maggot living in her eye and occasionally her eye will pop out because he'll pop out of her eye. He's only in her head for about half of the movie. The other half he's not anywhere near her body. He's kind of like roaming by himself. Uh, but yeah, a few jokes that kind of ran when Victor was trying to find his way out of the underworld. The maggot pops out, Emily's eye falls into her hand, and the maggot, what does the maggot say? He's like, hey, I'll keep an eye out for you. <laughs> uh, throughout this whole scene, uh, Emily is trying to find Victor, and she passes by a store that says Second Hand Shop, and it's just a bunch of hands everywhere, and they point to where Victor actually is. I, I found that pretty amusing. There's also this one dead guy who appears occasionally in the film. He appeared a few times where he just kind of splits in half. And I didn't see that coming. I found that pretty unique and funny. I guess I should have seen it coming, though, because we are dealing with people who are dead. There's a dog in the film. His name is Scraps. And he used to be Victor's dog, like his actual dog. Now, how Emily knew to get Victor's dog to be his wedding present, that's one of my questions. But I like how Victor is checking to see if Scraps still knows all the tricks. and. <laughs> Of course, he does the, the typical, hey, play dead. He can't, because he's already dead. He's just bones. <laughs> Another bit I really liked was uh, towards the ending where they're getting ready to have a wedding for Emily and Victor. Uh, now, for a little context, Emily can't marry Victor officially. They can't be wed because it falls under the rules till death do us part, and Emily is already dead. So they're technically not married. In order for Victor to really be married to her, he needs to be killed himself so this way they can be eternally dead and married forever. Which Victor accepts. Because at this point he learns Victoria is getting remarried to somebody else. Now I'm not fully sure why 
he just automatically was like, sure, kill me, I'll be with you. I guess it's because he realized that he likes Emily a little bit more, or maybe it's because he lost Victoria to wherever this other guy is to him, because he doesn't know who the other guy is. Um, but he's just full on board with dying. But they go to the living world, and they're kind of causing chaos towards everybody because the dead is among them, but I just love how calm all these skeletons and dead people are. There's literally one old lady who's like fighting them with her cane and and something else, but she's like swinging her arms around. She's like, oh, back off, and then like the dead people are just standing there like, yeah, we're here. here, here we are. But it's also sweet to see at the end of that whole scene where everybody's going and saying that the people that they're afraid of are just their relatives, and it's actually really sweet how they all come together, they're like, no, it's me, and they're like, oh, you've been dead for all these years, and hugs. But that's the only kind of reunion we get in that scene. The rest of it is just the uh, wedding scene that takes place at the church, which does have its own little funny moments, I like how the priest with the big hat, he's like, oh, this is, this is completely uh, ridiculous, and one of, the guy, one of the dead skeletons, they're like, keep your voice down, this is a church. And they all just go in with no problem. I think this is the first film that I've ever seen that involves dead people that are just so calm and are just like, nope, we're here for one reason, we're gonna go through with it, we're not gonna hurt ya. <laughs> the last main thing that I have for this film to comment on is the character Lord Barkus, who is a character in the movie. <laughs> Wasn't going to end the sentence like that, but that's just kind of how it phrased. So Lord Barkus is essentially the main antagonist of the film. And I knew, the second he started acting suspicious, I knew where this was going. A little more context, the whole reason why Victor is even marrying Victoria in the first place is because Victoria comes from a very poor family and they'll be living on the streets. Uh, Victoria's parents only hope is for Victoria to marry a wealthy young man and Victor comes from a very wealthy family. Uh, so that's the whole reason why the wedding goes forward and after Victoria becomes hysterical because she witnessed Emily, who I feel like I am not talking a lot about in this video considering she's the main reason this film is even a thing, uh, the parents are like, well, Victor's gone. What are we going to do now? We got to do something. So they have this guy, Lord Barkus, who kind of just shows up a day early. He, they realize that he is a perfect match for their daughter. He's very sophisticated. He knows his stuff. And the parents in this film as well for Victoria, you know, they can also be seen as bad people just by the way that they act. They're like, no, we want things to be this way. It's we're strict individuals. You are to do what we say. And they don't really approve of Victor that much, but they approve of Lord Barkus. It's really interesting also that they never find out about Barkus's plot, because the whole reason why he wants to marry Victoria is because of the money. He thought it had something to do with money. He got the whole money situation mixed up. It really wasn't until the hallway scene where he's walking by and he's laughing because he's like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna marry Victoria. The plan's working perfectly when I realized, hey, this guy might be up to something else because he hinted at the phrase till death do us part and he emphasized the whole death part in that phrase and that kind of connected something in my brain because the song that we had heard earlier about Emily how she became a corpse bride involved her being essentially murdered by her husband who she was once married to but I was right it had a connection Barkus ends up showing up at the end of the film. Victor and Emily, they don't go through with marriage because Victoria shows up and Emily's like, no, you two deserve to be together. And then Barkus shows up wanting Victoria back because he's going to kill her. And then we get revealed that Barkus and Emily were a thing. And I was like, I knew it. I called it in my head before anybody else who had seen the film before me. I'm about... 15 years late, but I saw it, and I called it. Uh, yeah, so that was pretty interesting, but kind of sticking with his character, he is very forgettable. Like, he appeared in the beginning, there was another scene with him, and then 
he was just kind of gone because we were focusing on the main aspect of the story. You know, with the villain, they recurringly appear, and I felt like we didn't get that a lot with him. Uh, yeah, but it was kind of satisfying to see him die at the end, or, you know, die <laughs> as in become a dead person. Uh, yeah, Emily, <laughs> quick comment. Thought she was pretty cool. Not much of a villain, just more of a lost soul that really wanted something, and this film was pretty good. That's that's how I transition out of that. This this film was pretty good. If you haven't seen Court's Bride yet, uh, definitely check it out. Give it a shot, because I do know that it is uh, very underrated, and it is a fun little thing to watch around the Halloween season, because it's got that feel to it. As long as it's got the Halloween feel to it, you know that it's a good film to watch around Halloween. So I would definitely check it out. If you haven't before, this was my first time watching it. I can't promise you'll be satisfied, because again, this film has its ups and downs. I think it's pretty cool. It's decent enough, so I would definitely recommend it. Have you already seen it, though? If you have, let me know in the comments and tell me what you thought about it. I'd love to hear other people's thoughts. Uh, the final thing that I will comment on before wrapping this video up is actually just more of a question. And if you have seen Corpse Bride, maybe you can answer this for me. What the hell happened to Victor's parents? If you haven't seen the film before, don't take this as, oh, the parents are dead, what happened to them, how did they die? Because they're not dead, they are heavily used in this film, they're shown a lot in the beginning. They were last seen in a carriage looking for Victor, because before the wedding day, they had until dawn to find Victor. This is after he was whisked away into the underworld. And that was the last time we saw them. Now, at the end of the film, there was the wedding scene, and all the dead people, all the skeletons, they left with Barkus, and Emily walked out of the church, left Victor and Victoria happily together, as they're gonna get married. Emily's like, okay, I'm cool with this, and then just kind of transforms into a bunch of butterflies, which is also very questionable. Like, why wouldn't you just go back to the dead world with everybody else? Why was it because your soul needed to be happy? And you turned into butterflies? Like, I, I don't get that. In the church with Victor and Victoria, there's, I believe, the maid that would take care of Victoria, and then two other people. But they don't look like Victor's parents, and if they are, they got a little design change to them. And maybe I just didn't recognize them. I looked at that scene twice, and I still don't know who they are. So maybe you can help me out with that, because I'm at a loss. I don't know what happened to these parents. Uh, they were either at the wedding for Victor and Emily, and if that was the case, why didn't we get a reaction from them on, like, everything going on? And if they're not... Are they still looking f for their kid? Uh, yeah. So those are all my thoughts. And that's the end of the video. Uh, so that's the end of Corpse Bride. Those are all my thoughts. I generally did think it was really good. I love Tim Burton's work. It might just be up your alley if this is the kind of stuff you enjoy watching. Especially if you like stuff to deal with the underworld. That underworld seemed like a fun place. We gotta keep the ball rolling, so come back tomorrow for another film discussion where we take a look at a family that's become an icon of this holiday. In the sense of both Halloween, but also the creepiest family ever in existence. Thanks for watching The Wild Devere on The Wild Devere, and you just saw me review a thing.